Hi everyone, Lauren here with Lauren Elizabeth Fine Art and I help beginner through professional level artists reduce stress while mastering the art of animal art. So guess what? On August 1st in two more days I have an artist challenge coming out and the winner receives for free my newest acrylics course called Beginner Acrylics Family Bundle. This can be done with your family, can be done with your neighbor, can be done on your own, but you learn all about the tools, techniques, and properties of acrylics while doing four real-time tutorials that range from 20 minutes long to an hour in length. Now today, in this tutorial, we'll be learning how to paint this whimsical bear, and it's very similar to the types of paintings I'll be creating for the artist challenge. I think sometimes we can put off being creative because it's too messy or it's too time consuming. Well, these little paintings take anywhere from 10 minutes to 30 minutes to complete. So I make it easy, I make it fun, I make it challenging so that it can take you to the next level in your animal art. So guys, without further ado, let's get painting this bear. So all the materials for this 30 minute tutorial are listed down below and all the links that I just mentioned. And we're going to get started with a detail round brush and make sure it's clean and damp. And with our burnt sienna, we're going to start drawing on a plain canvas. You could either have this white painted white or just plain. So I'm going to create a circle closer to the top of the canvas. I want to make room for the chest of the bear. Now because this bear is so up close, we can't see much of the ears. We only see the tops of them. So I want them to be pretty far out along the side, having a big large gap on the very forehead between the left and right ears. So next we're gonna create two lines. We're bringing that down for the snout. So I'm just going from the top center, kind of closer to the top center of this circle, bringing it down where it gets wider at the base of that circle. I'm gonna create a small little chin that we can barely see below that snout. And then if I'm gonna pull my brush up a little bit, I wanna make a really large nose. So it's closer to the bottom of that circle. It's not in the center of the circle, the larger circle. I wanna give myself enough room so that I can kind of create a upside down triangle that's connected to that circle. And that's kind of how a bear's nose is. It's circular, but then it kind of comes to a little bit of a V at the bottom. I'm gonna widen out the base of that snout. I really wanna make that wide because this nose is so up close. I also wanna extend out a little bit more the base of that larger circle, the head, because it gets a little bit fuzzy there with our fur. I'm gonna eyeball the eyeballs along with little eyebrows right above that. Let's make two lines, one on the left and right sides of the bear. We end up extending this out with our fur, so even if you have it in too far like I do, we end up layering fur on the outsides, but don't make it too wide that you don't have space to put the bumblebees. Now you don't have to add that little thing below. I end up covering over that and making that chest bigger. So I'm that upside down triangle we don't need because we end up painting over it. Let's fill in those big old nostrils. This nose is real close to the viewer, so we're gonna make those real large. Basically in the center of that nose, it's gonna extend out to the left and right sides and create a little bit of a section in between there for the center of the nose. All right, so I can't really see anything that we need to fix. If you wanna take this time, you can pause this video if you wanna touch up your drawing, but we're gonna jump straight into our paint now. I'm gonna wash out my brush and you could choose to either use a small detail brush like I'm using or you could use a small flat brush. I kind of recommend the small flat brush because of the larger areas we're gonna be filling in. So the first color I'm gonna mix is yellow ochre, white, and raw sienna. I wanna create a brownish tan 
around the nose. So this is gonna be covering the bridge of the nose on the left and right sides of it, but I'm gonna stop right directly below the nose because we wanna make that more of a gray. However, I am gonna fill in with this color, the chin. If you're not using a flat brush by now, I definitely recommend it for the next step. It's just more time consuming to do it with such a small brush, but we're gonna mix a tiny bit of black with a lot of burnt sienna. And I'm gonna be covering in the darker tones, which are on the left and right sides of the snout. And as I do this, I kinda of wanna cut down into over top our drawing. So I'm gonna start creating that, the, that little fur texture on the around the bottom part of the head and I'm also going to bring this color up even on the forehead but I'm not going to cut into the bridge of the nose you'll see that I leave that white Now, as I move up towards the head, I'm actually gonna add in more burnt sienna to my paint mixture. You can either even take it straight from your paint palette onto your canvas and be mixing it in because of how strong black is. But I wanna keep it lighter up top and then darker around where it's getting the least amount of light, which is on the lower parts of this head. I'm gonna leave that top area right on the top of the bridge of the nose white, but I am gonna fill in the ears. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing but to the lower part of the body with our burnt sienna and black. And like I said before, you don't have to paint in that little triangle. We're not gonna paint around that because we're just gonna be covering it up. But I want to get all the way underneath that chin and beneath that jawline with this color all the way out to where we created our drawing for the, the chest. Okay, so I'm going to be extending that out, just covering it in and also along the bottom of my, the siding of the canvas. Next, I'm going to use what's left on my brush of the black and burnt sienna and I'm gonna mix it in with some yellow ochre and raw sienna. I even have some left on my paint palette, but if it's dried for you, you just add in some yellow ochre and raw sienna. And this is the color we're gonna to use to join the bridge of the nose to the forehead. We want that in between medium tone color. The value is just right in between that dark and that light. Now, if you already haven't, I would say mix up more of this color, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, raw sienna, and a tiny, tiny bit of black. And we're gonna be kind of outlining the outer part of the head. So around the forehead, around the left and right sides, around the jaw. And I want to paint over my darks that I have just applied. And it's okay if it kind of blends in. If your paint is still wet like mine, that's really okay. We're gonna build up in color as it dries. Now I wanna find those eyes again, and what's gonna help me is if I use the same color with a round detail brush and I pull in those eyebrows. 
basically where the bridge of that nose kind of fades into the forehead is where I'm going to start those eyebrows. And then directly below it with my black, I'm going to create two eyeballs directly below those eyebrows. I'm going to make a dark gray and this is real subtle. I want just a tiny little highlight below those eyes. So I'm going to mix white with black to create that gray and whatever is left on my brush, my detail brush, I'm going to just add that to the bottom, almost like a gray outline on the bottom of those eyes. Now don't forget this color because I'm going to add a little bit more white to it to add that gray little fringe right on the bottom below the nose. So where we left that white, I'm just going to fill that in with a little bit lighter gray than what we used for the gray around the bottom of the eyes. And if this is still wet for you, this snout, that's okay. I'm actually just blending it in right now with my gray. Oh, this is my favorite part, the nose. I'm going to add a tiny, tiny bit of black to cobalt blue. Very small amount. And I'm going to fill in the majority of the nose with this blue while adding in a bit more black to the center bottom of the nose. So you'll notice that the top of the nose is the lightest. I want to keep that the bluest, most lightest part of the nose. And then as I work down, I'm just going to introduce a little bit more black and keep that dark. Now the other area that's getting a little bit more light is also the bottom edges of the nose. All right, now let's pull back in those nostrils. We kind of lost them here. So with straight black, I'm just gonna fill them in where we have the burnt sienna, our drawing. Right now is just burnt sienna, so I'm gonna fill those in, making sure to extend those out just a little bit on the corner edges where it kind of folds into that, the side of the nostril. So two big circles kind of cutting into the, the left hand and right hand sides. I want to keep that center of the nose, uh, especially towards the bottom, darker, so I'm going to bring that down a little bit. I'm going to use a little bit of white and yellow ochre and a little bit of raw sienna to add highlights in around the left and right sides of the nose. So we want the base of the snout to be the widest part and then it to get skinnier towards the eyes. So I want to extend this out to be pretty wide and I'm going to cut in right below the lip and around the chin. See how I'm kind of extending out the corners. Let's mix up more of this color, but no white this time. Raw sienna and yellow ochre, and let's brighten up that snout. Now here's how I like to layer really quickly. I just simply add some burnt sienna into the color I was just mixing. And while it's still wet, I just combine it so that it creates that gradual color gradient on the bridge of the nose. Let's continue using this color. It might have been a little too soon though. I'm adding a little bit of fur texture to the top part of the bear and look, I'm cutting into my background and yet I haven't laid down my background yet. So let's stop on the bear, pause for a moment so we can work on that background so that we can layer fur over top that. So I'm going to take more of my cobalt blue and lots of white 
and let's add blue to our background. I'm going to carefully cut in around the bear with my large flat brush. I just want to be careful and not bring in any brown into that blue. Now again, you won't have to paint this little area in at the bottom of the bear like me. Hopefully you've painted that in. But I'm going to also make sure I cut in to create a little tiny dip in the forehead of the bear. I don't want to make that solid circle. I kind of want to have a tiny subtle dip there. And I also want to make sure I keep this light and really rich in pigment. So if you have to let this dry and then add a second coat, that is fine. Especially if you're starting out with a plain canvas, nothing on it, you'll likely have to put two or three coats to make it a rich, solid blue to really bring out that blue in the nose. All right, so if you're still working on your background, no worries, you can pause and keep working on it until you're ready to move on to this step. But I'm gonna go back to my yellow ochre and my raw sienna mixture that we were using before we did our background. And with my detail brush, I'm gonna create little dabs of paint to start creating that texture and those highlights of fur. So over top the dark around the jaw, the forehead, the outer edges of the bear, I'm basically going to use this color to both outline and then dab sections of clumps of hair. I'm also going to use this color to create the ticked off <laughs> angry eyebrows on the top of the forehead. I really want to give this bear an expression of annoyance, frustration, uh, being bothered by these bees. And so I wanna make those real strong eyebrows. Let's add some highlights to those ears while also extending them out. Now, if your, your background is still wet, you can actually save this for later and add this if it's just still too wet. But mine's a little dry, so I'm able to put those in and kind of extend out the width of those ears with this color. All right, so next I'm gonna grab burnt sienna, just straight burnt sienna, and start building up highlights on the outer edges of the chest. And I'm also gonna fill in the front of that chest finely so that it's just like yours. Next, I'm gonna make sure I have a clean, damp brush. We're gonna go back to that nose. I'm gonna mix up a tiny bit of black, white, and cobalt blue. So we're making a medium to dark gray that we can place on the bottom of the nose to create a little highlight. We also wanna have subtle highlights to the bottom outer parts of the nose. So right below those big open nostrils, and then my goal for this nose too is to keep the top part very blue and a light blue. I added a little too much gray in there, so I had to kind of touch that up later. But as I move down towards the bottom of the nose, I wanna keep that dark. So that's gonna be uh, our darker bluish gray. So I added a little bit more black to the bottom part of the nose. And then as I have the top part is just more cobalt blue and more white. Now with a clean brush, and that's important, clean, you don't wanna have any blue on here like I did. I added this and noticed that I still had some blue left on my brush, but you wanna create a light gray, not a light blue. So mix up a tiny bit of black with white, a light gray, and just outline the bottom. 
take this time to touch up your eyes if you kind of lost them and the other steps that we've done. I also want to use burnt sienna to pull out those that expression in the face even more, making those eyebrows real strong. Okay, let's move on to our purple. So this is violet mixed in with a tiny bit of white. I want to keep it dark here because we're going to be applying this to the darkest areas of the bear, which are right along the left and right lower parts of the face. I'm just going to pull out that darkness, but also add some life to it with this purple. And I'm going to also add it around the chest. So the darkest areas around the right side, because we have a lot of our darkness on the right side of the bear. I'm going to add it there too. All right, so I have orange on my paint palette. If you don't already, make sure you add some. And we're going to go in with pulling out those oranges. We're going to add some yellow ochre and some orange. And we're going to start adding in those light tones around the outer part of the bear. And remember my dab technique. I really want to be dabbing my brush to create those sections of fur, making sure that they're closely uh, placed together. And as they move down around the outside of the bear, they're going to be pointing down. I want to cut in on the outside and kind of pull the my brush up a little bit into the darkness areas. So it's not just going to be creating a line. I'm kind of be going to be cutting into those darker areas while also pulling it out to the outer edge of the bear. I want to lighten up the bridge of the nose. We have the front of the nose being pretty light. The left and right sides, not down around the lip though, but just along the left and right sides of the nose. I'm going to pull in some raw sienna into my mixture so that I can very gradually combine the forehead, the dark forehead, with this light bridge of the nose, with this light nose. And so I want to keep it kind of a darker brown up towards the forehead. So I'm going to continue using this a little bit darker brown with my raw sienna in there. And I'm really going to be pulling in the, that fur and extending out the fur as well with this color. So you see on the around the chest area, I'm going to be adding some more width to this area. I'm, I'm even going to be going out into my blue background, uh, especially on the left side. We want to have more highlights there because it's getting a little bit more light. But I'm also going to do that to the right sides as well. So my paint's going to be thick here. I'm going to be cutting into the background to make it look like that fur texture and making sure that I cut into those darker areas. So if you watch me here, I'm going to combine purple, burnt sienna, and a little bit of my orange mixture. And you'll notice that I keep it very purple and dark towards the center of the chest and then more burnt sienna toned on the middle and then more orangish raw sienna on the outside. Do you see that? It's kind of that gradual progression. With a clean brush and some orange and raw sienna, so I have orange and raw sienna if that was hard to see. I know there's a lot of colors on my paint palette, but I'm gonna use this color to pull out those eyebrows. So we have ones that are closer to around the ears and then right above the eyes, I also wanna pull those out too. I'm going to wash up my brush and grab some black on my detail brush and let's put back in that mouth. I'm going to separate the top lip from the bottom chin with just a straight line. Now before you jump into starting these bees, I'm going to talk you through it before you get started, okay? So I want to create a white for the body of the bee first, and then I want to actually paint that in with yellow over top that, and then I want to create a gray for the wings. I know I kind of did that opposite here, but I'm saying what's really, what's helpful is if you create a white for just where you're going to place the bee, and then you mix in yellow with white for the main color of the bee, and then you go back around that for the wings, create a gray. And then once that is dried, then you would cut in with those little markings, those black stripes that they have on them. And I put two on each bee. 
I put a lot more bees than this. You can add in more bees, you can add in less bees. I even, looking back at this, I kind of wish I had a little bee sitting on the nose. I challenge you to doing that yourself if you want to. I just think the bees are a little bit more challenging than I thought they would be. But so let me go over that one more time. I recommend you doing white where you place the bees where you want them. Then you mix in yellow with white and you fill in the body, the main color. And then you create a, a medium gray with black and white for the wings, which are just two dabs above the bee. And then once it's dried, then you would go in with black stripes. Okay, so that's the process I recommend for these bees. And I kind of figure that out later. <laughs> you can have some bees behind the bear, some bees just on the left and right sides. You can add as few or as many bees as you would like. It's completely up to you. This is your painting. So what I'm going to do right now before I add my last and final step to the nose, I'm just adding touch ups. So I'm just going to be touching up my bees, touching up the bear and preparing for the last step, which is to add a vibrant blue highlight, a light blue highlight to the top of the nose. So for this step, I'm simply going to add white to my cobalt blue and just lighten up the top of that nose. I really want to pull out the blues in that nose with a light blue. And you can even go in with some just straight cobalt blue below that just to kind of connect the colors. All right, guys, take this time to do any touch ups that you see fit. I hope you enjoyed yourself. And if you already haven't, check out the links down below in case you want to participate in the Artist Challenge and win my newest course, Beginner Acrylics Family Bundle. <music>